So... So, I'm gonna start doing some movie reviews now and then. Um, been mean, thinking about doing this for a while, but I'm gonna start with this one because I've got something to say about it. The Hunger Games movie. Um, for a basic review point, this movie is very, very good. If you have read the book. If you haven't read the book, it will be somewhere between it was okay to this sucked. Um, yeah, simple as that. I mean, I was watching the film going, this is awesome, this is really good, I'm really liking the way they've done this. God help anyone who hasn't read the book. I mean, seriously. Um, the book is very good. And the movie tells the same story pretty much exactly. There's not a lot they've changed. They've changed a few bits around and speeded a few things up. Basically, because yeah, it's a movie so they don't have time to get into quite as much. Any changes they've made is tiny. Um, yeah. Read the book. The book, yeah, I'm very quickly reviewing the book. The book is very good. It's very well paced. It's very enjoyable. I listen to it, as I do. Um, I had great fun with it. Really, really nice. It's nothing new. Um, everyone's making a joke. Oh, it's like The Running Man or Battle Royale or Rollerball or blah, blah, blah. you know, there's a lot, you know, ye old cyberpunk blood sport is nothing new. And it hasn't been anything new for a long time. It doesn't mean it can't be a good concept if told well. And the book tells it incredibly well. I haven't read the sequels, but Mrs. has and is saying that they're damn good. The movie has... So the movie's great fun because if you've read the book, you know who the characters are and you want to see certain scenes and you're invested, you're, in, you're, you know, you're, you're interested. However, there are a few things that happen that they don't tell very well or don't explain properly or explain poorly that make the movie bad and if yeah if, as i say if you didn't have a vested interest going into the film you wouldn't it wouldn't be very good such as yeah some characters who whilst people who have read the book are sitting in the cinema going yeah! and you're sitting there going who what yeah they're dead who cares piss off you know because you haven't had because the book has more time to get you interested in the character and care for the character, etc. So that's my rough review. I am going to throw up my spoiler warning because I'm now going to get into how I think the film could have been done better and more properly what sucked. So yeah, um, read the book, go see the film, then you'll enjoy it. If you just go see the film without reading the book, you're going to have an iffy time. Um, yeah. So, what was particularly bad, that was blatantly bad for me, there was one big thing, um, which was huge, actually, it, so much so, it was laughable with having not read, you know, even with reading the book, I was like, what the fuck's this, this is a mess, and that is the commentators. During the Hunger Games, whilst um, Katniss is running around doing the things, in the book, stuff will happen, and obviously, you can hear her internal monologue, and she can explain things to you, and it feels comfortable and in place. So there's like there's a point where she's in a tree, and she says a tracker jacker nest, and she's like these are tracker jackers. Uh, tracker jackers are, blah, 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 and can explain it in the first person, and it works. It doesn't feel out of place. It's the kind of thing that books do. However, the movie hasn't quite figured out the show don't tell idea of movies. And so this has been happening. She's been running around the woods for ages. Nothing's been happening. And suddenly she looks at this tracker jacker nest. And suddenly the commentators from, you know, the viewing site suddenly pop up and go, Oh, these are tracker jackers. Yes, and for those of you who don't know what tracker jackers are, they are these giant wasp monsters. And it's just comes out of fucking nowhere! And it happens a few times. There's a time where she finds this minefield they've laid and suddenly they, the announcers pop out of fucking nowhere 
again and go, oh, I wonder if she's figured out that they've laid a minefield. Jesus Christ, it sucked. And the problem is, is that they could have done this and made it brilliant because they could have made it complimentary to the book. Because the book is told in the first person. So when you're in the Hunger Game, you have her going through it being, you know, in her mind. And it's her thoughts and what she thinks is going on. And anything to do with the outside world from the game is what she's deducing from things like the packages turning up, etc. She has to, you know, and it's her playing the game and being in the mindset of the game. How... So, but they could have done it with the film where they do it instead of from her point of view cutting every now and then to the outside because they don't know how else to fucking tell a story. They could do the entire thing from the outside and have the audience of the cinema being audience to the Hunger Games that they are showing you, rather than it being being in the Hunger Games with Katniss, you know? And, and then you could have got this whole other side of the story and still got what she was going through and all of that. Um, whilst, yeah, and, 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 and you could have then read the book and seen the film and they would have complemented each other. And then you could have had the announcers going, oh, and these are tracker jackers. Will she know about these? Can she do this? Um, because it wouldn't come out of nowhere because you've had them sitting there going and she's taking the eastern route whilst these guys have a bat and, and, and have a running commentary like the wrestling. Um... And it would have just worked much better, I feel like that. I think that would have been really nice to have seen is this, yeah, a, a different side to the story, but I don't think the writers had the fucking brains to do it, so I had to write this really fucking contrived ideas to it. Oh, so yeah, that was my big issue. That was my one big thing with the film, was that if they'd told the story from another side, we would have got a lot more to the book because the other thing we would have learned is things like what the fuck were the others up to you know you've got the the big guy who who hides in the cornfield or something it's a big grassland field um i think it's called trent or something i can't remember his name but yeah the, he's the big black guy who who saves katniss um when they're running for the bags halfway through um you know, it would have been nice to have maybe seen a bit more of what he's up to, or a bit more of the other characters, and seen seen the commentators talking about the fox face girl doing this whole snatch and grab routine throughout the whole thing, and hearing what they have to say about it. They could have made this a really exciting idea and added to the book, so that you then want to read the book to get the first person, and etc. And it would have, I think, it would have worked much better, but. They didn't. They they didn't do this. Um, yeah. Um, the other thing that they did was they they show District Eleven going into a riot, and I did have to when it happened in the book. I went in the in the film. Sorry, I went and turned to Rachel. And went, did this happen in the book? You know, did it, you know? And she goes, Yeah, you find out in book two. And I was like, Right. Because what happens in book one, it, when you're reading the book, is she, she sends Rue, she, she, she buries Rue and basically makes something of it. And they send her bread as a token. It's, it's their district's bread as a thank you token to her. Um, and that's really good and it means a lot to her and it gives her hope and, 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 and drive. But then, but they don't do that. It's almost like she doesn't know that they gave a shit. Yet they're fucking rioting, and they didn't go about it. That that was very mixed. They should have either. Again, it's the problem of they keep cutting out of the Hunger Games, whereas they should either fucking have stayed in it or stayed out of it or just smoothed it. Even that's the other thing is they could have done both. 
but it's more the fact that they were in the Hunger Games most of the time, but every now and then would pop out so that it would be jarring. Um, Apart from that, the movie was fine. The whole start sequence up to the games was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. Um, as I say, it was when they were actually in the game it started having issues. That was the big issue, was fucking pick which side you're telling. Um, the other thing which had a, had a big issue with was the end monsters. Now, I've heard a few people complain that they were shitty CG monsters, and yeah, they were. And yeah, they were going to be. Any Again, anyone who had read the book was prepared for a pretty fucking stupid-looking monster. To be honest, we were all ready for it to be ridiculous. So what we got were fine. It wasn't quite monstrous enough. They were just big fucking dogs. Nah, whoop de doo um, they weren't horrifying enough, but the big issue was that they f that it really confused what grounds they were playing on. I've seen a couple of reviewers go, I don't get what The Hunger Games is. Is it virtual reality or is it just them on land in a bubble? I don't get it. And I can see the confusion because of what they do with the dogs. That's the bit that fucking confuses everyone because it seems like it's... They're just in a bubble, you know, they're in a, in a cordoned off area of the forest and you have, and they've got cameras and they've got traps and shit set up. But suddenly with these dogs, they're rising them out the ground like it's a fucking video game. And even I was going, what the fuck? What's this bullshit? You're supposed, you know, they, they, they come out in the books, they come out of the tubes, the lifts that the fucking um, players come out of at the start. And that's what they use. So this fucking coming out the ground just didn't make any fucking sense to me either. Um, and that was bad, actually, because it did. It really confused what the fuck The Hunger Games was supposed to be and how it was, you know, it was too advanced and if they were going to do shit like that they should have maybe explained it a bit more or done it earlier or something it was out of fucking nowhere because the only thing they'd really done was fuck with day and night which is plausible they had a big digital bubble um and secondly they throw a lot of fire around the place but you can do that with a lot of fucking sound cannons that you know that wasn't confusing Really, that was would be what was expected from the game makers. So, yeah, that was a bit of a rant on that. Uh, only other thing really to say about the movie is I agree with everyone that the shaky cam was a pain in the arse. Um, didn't do them any favours on that. They could have, they had some really lovely composed shots if they'd just fucking held the camera still. The worst thing, the time when it got worst for me was during the end fight you've got one quite broad-shouldered blonde kid versus one quite broad-shouldered blonde kid so when in the dark with a camera going like this i was like who the fuck's hitting her i don't know i don't fuck off so yeah so there is plenty to complain about this movie i mean i've said it there but because i've read read the book and enjoyed the book I've gone in with, as I say, interest in the characters and interest in how they're doing it. And there is a lot of scenes I could go into where I, they've done this really well. I really like the way Katniss acts. I really like the way Peter is. The way they did Cinna is excellent. Um, it's so on. They did all, you know, the big thing here is that all the characters were really good. I thought it was really interesting that Rue and the other guy again i'm gonna call him trent he might not be district 11 chap the big fuck off dude they were black and they don't say that they're black in the book so i didn't think of it it just didn't cross my mind um but when it when they were black I was like, oh, they're black that's a really good idea because district 11 is harvesting so it feels like the whole you know it, it gives memory to the whole um, American slave trade with the, you know, working the fields. So it's a really clever little, you know, idea like that. Um, so they did do a lot of things very cleverly. 
what would have been nice to see as well, sorry, I told you, this is going to be a bit of a ranty video. Um, what would have been nice to have seen as well, though, is if they'd given all the different districts different accents. I know it was something um, one of the reviewers I watched said, which is that um, they've all got stupid names, yet they're speaking American. And the idea is that names are supposed to have kind of evolved. So it's not Peter, it's Pita. And it's not Hamish, it's Hamish. Um, and so on. But they're all speaking American, so it just sounds silly in the movie. But it's supposed to feel in the book like they're speaking an evolved language, but it's been, you know, brought back into normal English for the reader, you know. So I think it would have been nice if they'd sort of worked with that and given them different accents. So, you know, like District 12, they're all coal miners. They could have been fucking Welsh. Given them a bit of a Welsh twinge, that would have been cool. You know, as I say, they could have given the whole... Um, District 11, a sort of New Orleans, you know, thing. They, they would have had to be careful, you know. This is something they would have had to have been careful with. I don't want to be stereotyping or taking the piss. But, you know, they are supposed to, it does say in the book that they all have their own accents. It would have been nice if they'd done that, you know, because they could have worked with it. So it's things like, you know, because they, if, if they'd been clever about it, they could have done stuff. For example, Dundee, where I'm from, um is heavy textile industry originating. They used to do a lot of jute um, milling. So, and that's how the Dundee accent came about. That it's not I, right, okay, it's eh. Can I have a pe? And they use eh rather than I because, because of the machinery and the heavy jute machinery, the I wouldn't pick up when you're speaking over it, but the eh sound would. So if they'd been clever and looked into how dialect and accents evolved due to different working situations, they could have had a whole different... They could have had these little ideas drop in, and that would have been really clever, but they weren't that clever. That's kind of the pity with this movie, is what, was, what is done well is done excellently, but what was done badly is pretty fucking awful but i enjoyed it we'll probably pick it up when it comes out on disc um getting ready to read the second book we'll see the other ones yeah good movie as i say that's my rant over um hope you enjoyed that i will probably come back with the avengers is probably the next big one i'm gonna have a big rant about because it'll be interesting so yeah cheers for watching guys catch you later